everyone, and welcome to the 71st episode of That Sewing Lab. Again, we are so very happy to have you all join us again tonight. And we have a beautiful guest as usual tonight, and we're gonna get to her in just a moment. But I wanna let all of our new people that have joined on with us, if you have any questions for us or any comments, please scroll, uh, look over to the bottom of the screen where it says, ask a question. Click on that section and put post your questions there. And then when you post your questions, just hit that section again and it'll take you back to the screen. So um, there's also something that I would like to bring to the attention that, and I was very, very not, I wasn't so consistent with this before, but I promise I will be consistent with it in the future. I introduce myself and this lovely person drinking over here. Um, <laughs> not like I should. And this lovely lady is our host of this show. Her name is Dawn Pengali, and she uh, writes a blog called Dueling Designs. I call her the host of this show because she spends countless hours, and I mean countless hours, trying to get beautiful guests like our one we, the one we have here tonight. And she, if she were not here doing what she did, there would be no that sewing blab. So I'm gonna take a second and give her a applause oh, because I love her so much. And again, this is the host of our show, Dawn Pingali. I am her co-host, Myra of In Simple Inspiration. Couldn't get that out. <laughs> but anyways, without further ado, I'm gonna pass it over to the lovely Dawn so she can introduce this beautiful woman sitting before us so we can get this show started, folks. So Dawn, here you go. Wow, that was like a crazy introduction this week. Wow, Myra. Um, thank you very much. But we all know you are, yeah, the heart. Really, Myra. I'm very blessed to have you on the show. Thank you. Now, this is the I Love Everyone Society, obviously, and sewing into it. And, <laughs> and right at the top of that heap, of course, is Lauren. Um, you must have seen her blog, Ladybird. And if you haven't, I know there's a lot out there. It is well, well, well worth the stop. Um, like, why go visit her blog? Like, there's so many out there. Why would you? Well, she makes lovely, lovely clothing, very stylish, yet very wearable. And she has a definite point of view. Um, I think you called yourself opinionated. Yes. <laughs> I would say the words I, like, I, I racked my brain. I, I would say more unabashedly real. Like, um, <laughs> you don't seem, you know, you are what you are and you're sharing with everyone. And that's why it's like an addictive read. Um, yes. What you post, what you write, how you explain things, it is exactly like it is. I don't think that you're trying to Instagram sugarcoat everything. No, um, no I, I think it's you make fabulous clothing. You have a beautiful writing voice. Might not be orthodox, but that is what makes it so special. So we are absolutely thrilled you're on the show tonight. Thank you so much for coming. <laughs> well, thank you. I'm super pumped to be on here. I was really flattered to be asked. <laughs> Yes. Well, we, we had to have you on there. Now oh, yeah. we have we have a bunch of questions that we normally get to, and sometimes we jump around and we don't always ask the same questions because it depends on our guests that we have for the night. But um, Dawn, do you want to start off with the first question? Because I'm always <laughs> right there. Um, yeah, we normally just ask um, how or when you started sewing, like was there an yes. inspiration, how old yes. you were, that kind of thing, because it's great knowing, it's like your origin story of a superhero. What was your yeah. origin story with sewing? So um, sewing has always been in my family. My last name actually is Taylor, and I have seamstresses on both sides of my family. Not even, not even just the Taylor side, but both sides of the family. Um, so my mom always sewed and I was interested in it because it was something she did. And I, I was one of those little girls who wanted to be exactly like my mother. So my mom sewed, I wanted to sew. I think I started doing it when I was maybe like six years old. I was real little and she had to set me up with my own sewing box because I would go in her room and take stuff out of her sewing cabinet, but just kind of leave it strewn across the floor. So she got me set up with my own sewing box and I would just sit next to her and hand sew like, I don't know, little purses for my Barbies and <laughs> I made a quilt for my Barbie once. It was all little tiny handwork stuff. I also like just working on small scale things. Um, 
So I got, I did that for a long time. I didn't get into sewing clothes. I started altering clothes when I was a teenager because I was like 90 pounds and nothing fit me. So I learned how to take in like t-shirts or like, I listened to a lot of like punk and hardcore music, all those band t-shirts, like men's size small, which was like on me would have been like a men's XL because I was so little back then. Um, so I learned how to take the shirts in and we also were all wore really tight pants, but like skinny jeans didn't exist back then. <laughs> Everybody was wearing flares. So I learned how to make my jeans a little skinny pants, um, but I didn't actually start making clothes from a pattern until I was 20, which was 12 years ago now. Wow. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, I know that, um, you said that you were all self. we know that you're all self-taught. So you've not taken any courses or anything since for your I mean, sewing, only for your sewing. I've done some classes since then. I don't think that there's anything wrong with taking a class, even yes. if you already, even if you might already know how to do the thing, it's nice to just, and this is the teacher and me talking too, but it's, it's nice to, to learn from other people and learn yes. like how they do things. Um, I did a bra making workshop with Madeline once. I was more like a, more like a guest than an attendee for that. And I helped with setup. up. Um, my mom and I took a few little sewing classes. They were mostly okay. like, I don't want to say quilting, but like we made little pouches and stuff at the mm. local sewing machine shop. And it was less because I wanted to take a class and more because I wanted to spend time with my mom. Mm -hmm. um, no, I haven't really taken many classes. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> That's okay. Well, I know we want to get into some of the really, really beautiful uh, stuff. And I, I need to bring this up first off. And I don't know if you have it up already, Don. You may. But um, I am, for some reason, I don't know why I'm really into PJs. Okay. And that was the first thing that hit me was those beautiful pajamas that you made. I think it was, uh, it's on your most current post. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. my gosh. I have I never, huh? They are freaking, I love them. I, I, there's nothing about them I don't like. I know that um, you talked about the fabric. Um, I've never worked with that fabric at all. And actually, um, Liberty and Lawn, I've never worked with at all. And these are Liberty. This, is, this fabric is Liberty, correct? Yeah, it's Liberty of London. Yeah, that is, oh, I just, I, I want, if, I could fit in them. I would beg <laughs> you, could I have those? <laughs> because I really, really like them. I like the piping you did around both the cuff on the shorts and all around the front, the collar. I love the black. Let me stop talking. You tell us about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so what I like about this fabric is um, it's Liberty of London fabric, which everybody, at least in my corner of the sewing blog, is obsessed with. And I haven't really been a huge fan of them because the designs are always like really kitschy and like not not kitschy they're like tiny flowers and pastel colors is oh, okay. not my style at all um, <laughs> beautiful but anytime I get that stuff I, I don't want to wear it yeah it's very grandma like yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly that's what I was laughing at um, <laughs> Carol said grandma <laughs> but so the, this uh, company that this fabric they get oh is this thing? it's pretty I would wear it I just got it this weekend I think it's where I'm growing up and only high end grandma she said high end grandma <laughs> I'm only wearing pink and like insisting because my sister and I were so close in age my mamaw would send us pink and blue things and I would always get the pink and so now like I don't want to wear pink and I don't want to wear flowers even though I was the one who was always like no, I don't want the pink whatever like I'm the younger one but um so what I like about this fabric though is Josephine's dry goods where I got it they stock a lot of Liberty it's not just a tiny selection like most stores have so that's when I realized that Liberty had stuff that wasn't just like grandma looking fabric it's and, and and there's not it's not all florals it's all these crazy like abstract and art deco designs and stuff and so that that jungle psychedelic jungle print just like blew me away yeah I want and that. Really <laughs> that yeah and it feels amazing it's a really oh, beautiful so high quality so fabric um oh. and yeah I just thought with the piping and the black stitching it would keep it keep the focus on the design of the fabric and less on like, I mean, I think the PJs are fabulous, and now I really want to wear the top. 
as a top. Oh. <laughs> yeah. I love them. Now the fabric, is it, does it feel like regular cotton or is it like a brush something kind of, um, you know what I'm trying to say? Yeah, I know what you mean. It's a cotton lawn. So it feels like, like a really nice cotton shirting. Okay. Yeah. Like a really tight weave, but it feels really cool on your body. It doesn't mm -hmm. hang your feet and it doesn't, um, it's not see-through uh -huh. or anything. It's, it's very crisp. I mm, want those soft. pajamas. I really want. Yeah. Them. <laughs> well, that's really. It, 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 I'm I'm sorry, Dawn. Oh, it was just a crop say. dress. Oh. <laughs> See that one? It was a. Uh, it was my first time actually, because I've seen some of it before. But I went up and petted it at um, this weekend in New York, and yeah, I actually bought some of it, and it, it does. It has a lovely handle. It's the first thing you notice, you pick it up and it's like, wow, like some of the ladies said, don't stick your bag down when you're at Bryant Park because one of us is going to steal it, you know, like, <laughs> it just, so to make that into pajama, oh, that's lovely. Okay, yeah. you guys have sold me, I, I got to get some. Yeah. <laughs> See, I've had a lot of people tell me, they're like, I would never spend that much money on fabric for a pair of pajamas, but my reasoning is, that's like the only thing that you could wear every single day that no one will judge you for. Yes, I agree. I agree a hundred percent. I agree with that. <laughs> Wear per <for> use. <laughs> exactly. Now you you had some beautiful pieces. We're gonna to get to some more of yours because I have a couple more of my notes down here. But um what inspires your work? I mean, where do you get your inspiration from? Um, usually out of need. <laughs> 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 I make everything that I wear, so um, it's usually what I need in my closet at that time. Um, I think I'm more inspired by pattern than fabric. Like mm -hmm. the like seeing the pattern is probably going to propel me to find the fabric and make the design versus the other way around. But in the case of the Liberty PJs that we just talked about, that the fabric came first. Okay. Uh, and so lately, I have developed a really big obsession with Gucci. <laughs> with, what was that? Gucci. Mm. The designer. Really? Yes. I never would have guessed that I would be <laughs> that designer. It doesn't seem like my aesthetic, but I keep going. And every time I go to New York, I go in those high-end stores and look around. And Gucci and Valentino are my two favorites. But I think Gucci is the one. Really? Well, it could be the abstract you know, design of some of the clothing that could be. Their clothing is like art pieces. Yeah. It's so beautiful and it's so well made. And it's just like, uh, I don't know, just, I, I like shed a tear. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Dawn, did you use? Uh, yeah, I was just going to say, with your writing in particular, like I was talking about earlier, you definitely have a voice. I was yes. wondering if, for someone who makes clothing who's thinking about starting a blog, did you start off with that voice? Did it kind of develop over time and you got more comfortable? Or is this just you and that's how it is? <laughs> yeah, I've, I've definitely always had my voice. Um, I started out on, uh, what did I do first? I think I started on, I started on a website called Craftster. I don't know if y'all have ever heard of that. Sounds familiar to me. It's old school, not old school, but like 2004, <laughs> 2005. Oh yeah, that's real old school. <laughs> <laughs> so like pre-blog, but not not so old that like you couldn't upload a picture on it. Yeah. Um, and so I kind of developed my voice a little bit on there. Mm -hmm. And then when the website, when it, it stopped like the the traffic kind of died down it was because everybody had moved on to blogs so i went and picked up a blog and was like oh well i'll just keep sharing my makes here on craftster so i already kind of had that voice i've always been pretty opinionated and one thing that i had to decide when i started my blog was um how i was going to talk in my blog like the words i was going to use and my tone of voice and all that stuff because i realized like i've i love meeting people on the internet I used to lie to my mom and tell my mom that my friends that I was meeting were like pen pals through a magazine when they were like friends that I met on an AOL message board. I've met people on the internet since I was like little. And I knew that eventually if I was 
doing this blog and I would meet other sewing people, I was going to meet them in person. And I didn't want people to be just completely traumatized by the way I talked to them. <laughs> person, my blog. That's why I talk that way on the internet. Okay. With that segue, I'm going to actually have to bring this, bring this up because I was so taken by reading your blog. I love it, by the way. If I haven't said it enough, I absolutely <laughs> love your blog. Thank you. So fun. But when I got to, and you all, if you haven't, do yourself a favor. You have to go out and read her blog because she has some really great stuff out there. But one of the things that really <laughs> it gave me a chuckle, there were a lot of them, but this one really gave me a chuckle. <laughs> chuckle in your frequently asked questions. You know, you're actually answering the questions that you are asked all the time on your blogs and comments and what have you. And when I got to this last one, <laughs> I just could not stop laughing. It was very short and to the point. One of the, she said, one of the questions I'm asked all the time is why do I curse so much? <laughs> and she said, go away. I bet that was perfect. <laughs> that was very perfect. It was very well said. <laughs> and I have to say, I think the light hearted, and I'm not going to say cursing, but the light hearted swearing that you do in your blog was so refreshing to me because it made you a real person, you know, to yeah. me, it, it really did. So you got your point across with that. <laughs> well, thank you. Um, I was wondering, kind of talking about finding your voice on the written word. Have you found the same thing with your style? Like it takes a while to find what your style is? And is there a different style from stuff you buy in the store versus the stuff you make? And yeah. has it evolved over time? Because you do have a lovely style. Like you look at the things you make, you're like, yeah, I'd wear that, I'd wear that, I'd wear that. Um, yeah, so how did that kind of develop for you? Um, it actually went a little haywire for a while there. <laughs> so the really beautiful thing about sewing is that you can make anything you want. But that's also the bad part about selling is you can do <laughs> anything you want. And so I think I've, I've always had a very distinct style, even if you can't necessarily label it, which I'm not saying that my style can't be labeled, but I couldn't tell you what I would label it as. But you can, throughout my entire life, with all the ways I've dressed, you'd be like, oh, that's something Lauren would wear. Oh, that's not something Lauren would wear. It's always very distinct and very, like, easy to, like, file away and organize. Um, so I I got into sewing more so than, than before because I realized I can make vintage stuff and I was getting really into vintage. That's like where, what my style morphed into was vintage. And so I stayed on the vintage bandwagon for a while. When I stopped wearing vintage, I just went through this really weird couple years where I was making all this stuff that I don't, that isn't my style, that I couldn't figure out why I didn't want to wear it. And so that's when I started, I was making things in like pinks and purples and like colors I don't wear. I was wearing, I was like buying floral fabric and then not wanting to wear the garment or, or making something that like the, the shape wasn't something that I liked, or I felt like stupid or frilly. And I still kind of struggle with it a little bit. Um, I don't buy clothes. And I haven't bought clothes in a long time, but I think um, what was keeping me on track with my style, I used to work in an office and I spent a lot of time sitting on the internet, you know, looking at Pinterest or looking at websites and getting sewing inspiration. I don't do that anymore. I'm self-employed. I don't sit on a computer and like <laughs> pass time boredly. So now I'm like in this weird little bubble and I don't go shopping and I don't even look at clothes. So I'm in this weird little bubble vortex where I'm pretty much the only clothes I'm looking at are what other people are making on their sewing blogs. Uh -huh. So it's kind of been a learning experience and getting back into that, like finding what my style is and like, you know, I got rid of all the purple fabric in my stash. <laughs> That's what I don't wear. So um, yeah, I'm still on that journey. It's been a really interesting journey. Yeah, it's really oh, interesting I, to hear you say that too, because I've heard that said on the on the show uh, a bit. You know, we all kind of get stuck in looking at, um, not looking at, but making what everybody else is making, mm -hmm. and you know, and a lot of times it's not something for us just because everybody else is making it and it might look good on other people. You have to really think about your style, and I, I'm included in that. I've yeah. jumped on that bandwagon too, and you can't do that all the time. You have to keep with yourself. Yeah, and uh, like how you said on your blog, for a while there you made a lot of dresses. 
-hmm. And then you start making a more everyday wardrobe. And then you realize now that, you know, you need to put some more dresses back into it. Yeah. Um, as your job, as just your preferences, your body shape, yep. style, so many things can change. So, I mean, I think it's, you know, it's not as great as fast fashion because I'm sure you could change every day and be someone different. But sewing is definitely amazing for, you know, once you realize you're getting off track and it doesn't feel comfortable, you know immediately that you've come back and find yourself. So it's great that you like to even recognize that. It's very self-aware. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Now you mentioned about getting rid of the purple fabric. What are some of your go-to <laughs> fabric resources? Um, so I'm really boring and I get most of my fabric from mood. <laughs> because, well, because I have this relationship with mood where yeah. I, through their sewing network, um, I get an allowance every month to purchase fabric from. Um, I don't always stay under the allowance. You know, sometimes, like when I was just in New York this past city, I dropped a lot more money in me than allowance. <laughs> and um, so it's not even necessarily that I get this allowance. It's that I, I know what where the fabric is. I'm really familiar with the website. I know the layout of the store when I go there. I know that I can trust the quality of the fabric. Like the shipping is free for me. There's like a lot of reasons and mostly I'm just lazy. So I'm, and then they have like pretty much everything there. So I'm yeah. like, oh, I'll just get, from, I'll just get everything from mood. Um, there are other stores that I like. I get a lot of fabric now, not a lot, but so I work at a craft store in Nashville. We sell some apparel fabric, which I, I usually get at least to like be able to make a sample for the wall. Mm -hmm. um, that store is called Craft South. I get, um, I also really like Organic Cotton Plus. They have really good cottons and wools and piece silks that I, that I like a lot. Um, I've gotten some fabric from Style Maker Fabric, and then there was another one that I just got the other day. What is it called? Hold on, I'm gonna look at my email real quick. Because <laughs> I just got it and it was really, really beautiful. The Confidence Stitch. That's another uh, apparel fabric resource that I found. But mostly I just wait until I go to New York and get it there because I'm up there a few times a year. And it's really hard to buy fabric online if you mm, like don't. The yeah, I'm just like picky about it. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, I like to be able to touch it. And I feel like what I can't get here, mm -hmm. specifically like bottom white fabrics, like denims and stretch twills and, and t-shirt knits, like those in particular, I am very, very picky about how they feel and like what their weight is. Like a silk charmeuse from one shop is probably going to be the same as the silk charmeuse from another shop. Right. I'd be fine ordering that online. But like, if I'm buying stretch denim, I want to make sure that it has enough stretch. Right. Because it's so different with everywhere you get. I'll like literally just stand there and pull them apart in the store and try to find the stretchiest one. Because mm -hmm. I like to wear my pants painted on. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty cool. <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, oh yeah. Uh, one of the things I wanted to say, uh, you, is there anything that you, first off, is there anything that you haven't done? Because when I went through your blog, there was so much, I mean, going on and you actually have a tutorial section on your blog. That's amazing. You have a lot of stuff on there. And if, you know, for the new sewers or the people that are interested in sewing, I mean, she has some stuff out there that would really be interesting to you. If you just go out there and take a look at her tutorial section of her, um, her blog, there's a lot of great information out there. And I need to go back there and look at a couple of things too that I was really interested in. But that's the reason why I asked you, if, is there anything you haven't done? Because I have to say, other than all that great information you have there, and there's more to come, there's a sweater. She, she knits and on top of everything else she knows. <laughs> and she made this sweater that caught my eye. It's called the um, Anaheim. Yeah. And oh my gosh, that one, I do, I used to knit. Let me say that. I used to knit and crochet. But that made me want to revisit knitting again because I want that so bad. It's so pretty on you. It's absolutely adorable. Now, how long did it did it take you a long time to make that? I mean, the it's I love the crossover, the wrap, the it's beautiful. It took me about 
I think maybe two and a half months to knit. Um, well, that's not bad. Yeah, well, my timeline was a little weird. So the that sweater was for a um, outfit along that I do with that particular knitwear designer. So she designed that sweater to be knitted in two months. Okay. Like, it's you should be able to finish it in two months. It's not a super long-term sweater. I started mine a little before everybody else. And then in the middle of that, I moved, and then I ran out of yarn. And oh, so I had a couple that set me back that just I weren't wasn't able to I should have finished it in a month and a half realistically just from like knitting in front of the tv for a couple hours every night kind of a thing not even like putting my nose down to the grindstone yeah um yeah it's an easy pattern it's really fun to knit well one of the things I was going to say Dawn if you could get a close-up of it on her when she on her back because you can really see the detail of the difference in between the sleeve and the actual body of the sweater because they are they look too different. See what I'm there it is. I really love that. That is beautiful. Yeah. Now are they two separate they're two separate and distinct stitches, correct? Yeah, so the body is all lace work, which has those big open holes, and then the sleeves are just stockinette. So okay. because it's knit in the round, you just knit those sleeves like endlessly. Wow. I, so I love that. I want one in white, Lauren. <laughs> <laughs> she looks at me and smiles. <laughs> grab, grab your needles, Myra. Right? <laughs> no, it's gorgeous. Yeah. <laughs> now, and I have, well, I have what since I still have stage. Now, again, I think this was in your frequently asked question. It was so funny, but just, um, someone asked you the question, does your sewing room really, really stay clean all the time? And you answered in one word, yes. It does. And, <laughs> and I know there are some people out there going, really? I mean, you can kind of see it. It's pretty clean yeah I saw I saw the picture out there I, it was definitely clean and I understand um, there are just differences and that's beautiful you do have a great sewing space absolutely great sewing space thank you but maybe um, talk a little bit about that for you what it means to you to always have it organized and clean like that for yourself so for, for our viewers yeah I can't work if it's messy it stresses me out. I'm not, I'm not easily flustered and I don't get super, super stressed, mm -hmm. but being in, in an untidy room really does stress me out. It really bothers me. Mm -hmm. um, I'm one of those people who, if you come over to my house and there's like a cup in the sink, I'll apologize for the mess. <laughs> not, not a neat freak. I, don't, I don't like make people take their shoes off when they come in and get all weirded out about the carpet or anything, but I just, I don't like clutter around everywhere. Yeah. Um, but so in order for me to be able to use this room and for it to function the way it should, I have to, it, there has to be clear space. And I, I'm one of those people who puts everything away the second that they use it. So I don't lose stuff. Yeah. My, my scissors are all hung on these little pegs. And when I'm done with them, they go back on the little peg. It's like, I always know where everything is. My drawers are always well organized. And it's, it's to me, it's just more efficient to be mm -hmm. that way. Um, I don't know where that came from because I was a total slob when I was a kid. <laughs> but it, was, it definitely wasn't my first apartment because that was a disaster too. But maybe like my second apartment when I realized that nobody was going to clean up after me. <laughs> <laughs> it became pretty neat. But it gets, yeah, it's, I mean, you might have some things on the cutting table. There's like pieces on my cutting table right now because I'm working on a bra. Uh -huh. um, but there's not like piles of fabric on the floor. There's not trash everywhere i don't have like my trash bin is, is isn't overflowing everything i don't throw things in the drawer and close the drawer i put them back where they go so it's pretty pretty tidy i would say yes it's yeah. a beautiful it's a sewing beautiful space. space absolutely yeah, so that's, that's actually my old sewing space this is a new room i've moved uh, oh yeah. it's not on the blog yet but oh, okay so we get <laughs> first of all one I thought I put the wrong one. No, 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 that was the most recent one, but I moved since then, so now I'm in this slightly smaller space, but it gets better light. Yeah, it's beautiful too, and we got mm. first view at it. Yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> nice. What's that called? It an exclusive. It's our first exclusive. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> uh, um, I did read one post, and I thought it was highly entertaining. Um, you were asked, I guess, a lot. How do you so so much all the time, basically? And um, so you wrote a post talking about how you did do that, including things like, and I, I found one of them surprising. I totally am on board, but. Um, you said things like um, you wanted to make sure that you're, well, one, you're fast, you sew fast, you have a dedicated space, um, you have a cue, which we'd like to hear more of, because I think people would definitely learn a lot from hearing about how you cue things up, um, but that you have a muslin, uh, you do a muslin as well. Like a lot of people say, oh, that'll slow you down, but I'm, I totally agree with you with the muslins. It saves me so much time and hassle in the long run. Yeah. Um, you, you don't have any UFOs. And you sew every, well, actually two things. You sew every chance you can get, and you absolutely love it. And I'm like, really? That You can't say it any plainer than that. Those, that is, yes. drop the mic, that is totally yes. it right there. That's yes. brilliant. Um, but yeah, I'd love to hear more about um, your Q system and, and how you, it's, it's all about staying organized. As sewists, we all want to know, like, I want to get through more stuff. There's more things to do in a day. So yeah. I'd love to hear more about how you do that. Well, it's been a few years since I've written that post, so a few, I think only maybe one thing has changed, um, but I batch cut now, so. I do too. Not, yeah, I'm not a huge fan of cutting, but I'll just put on like some, some shitty TV show and really into cutting like five things at once, and I'll cut everything, I'll fuse all my interfacing, I'll mark all the pieces, depending on how good I'm feeling, I might also stay stitch and do the darts. But at least get everything compiled, put in a um, put in a little roll, and I put it in this basket I have on my shelf um, for work in progress. It's really helpful with uh, underwear because that's the worst part is cutting, like sewing bras and pants. Cutting is the worst part to me because it's like tiny little fiddly pieces. And then <laughs> you don't buy a kit; you have to look through all these elastics and stuff and try to see like what goes with what and then when you're cutting the little tiny fiddly pieces you need like three of each piece because you're cutting it out of like the outer the lining and the power oh, wow. <laughs> it's a pain in the butt and i hate it so now i'll back up the three of them and put them in a bag with all the elastics on the trims that go on the bra and then put them in, in the bra box and then when i feel like sewing a bra it's not like oh i have to cut that stupid bra it's like oh i can just take <laughs> yeah. take it out and start sewing it and I try not to do two massive of batches. Like I don't want to have like 15 things cut in my queue. I think I'd go crazy if I did that. But like my last one, I had two dresses and a pair of pants cut out. And once you get past the cutting and piecing stage, it, it's much easier to, to bring yourself in the room to sew for like 10 or 20 minutes. Um, that's the other mm. habit that I've gotten I, I think I mentioned that in the blog post too, but like even if you only have like 10 minutes to sew, yeah. you should still take advantage of it if you feel like it. Like if I feel like sewing is not fun at the moment, I'll put it down and go in the other room. Like because you don't want to take what's a fun hobby and make it into something that's mm -hmm. stressing you out. Yeah. And I didn't like the way you refer to it. I even set my timer yeah. so that I know, <laughs> you know, I saw that. And again, and what Dawn was reading, and she brought it up when she was speaking, I'd like you to hear more on that too, because um, I people were shocked when I said it, but you said, you asked a question in there on your blog um, that I'd like to answer, because you, okay. asked, you <laughs> asked your people out there, and you said, you asked the question that, you, are you the only one who gets stressed out and nagged by UFOs? No, you are not. I am one too. I did not have any UFOs to sew <laughs> when the challenge came up because that's something that I just don't do. And I agree 100% with you. And that is my reasoning. It's, I'll let her explain, but that's my reasoning. Yeah, they're, I just find them really stressful. It's like, I mean, I hate to sound like a hippie, but it's the energy in your sewing space, man. Yeah, it does. Just have something that's unfinished that, like, if it's a UFO, there's a reason why it's a UFO. There's you mess something up, yeah. or you don't know how to do something, or you don't like the project anymore. And all of those are a reason for you to get rid of it, whether it's to finish it and get rid of it or just get rid of it. Yeah. Um, which is 
I try to finish them, but sometimes you just have to accept that a garment is a water. <laughs> yep. There's nothing wrong with it. I mean, there's nothing wrong with making something that's a total fail either, as long as you know why it failed yeah. so that you don't do it again. Absolutely. I, I feel agree. like a learning experience. <laughs> <laughs> yes, absolutely. Dawn, did you, did she get all of your points? Yes, she did. Okay, can you tell us some of your favorite projects, your all-time favorite projects? So one of my favorite things that I ever made is the, I made this dress out of bird fabric from uh, Mark Jacobs. Oh, okay. I have that. I have no, that what I'm talking about. <laughs> All right, it's gorgeous. Oh, oh you my, have oh, my gosh. I already have it ready. Here I it comes. So love that dress. <laughs> are, you, are you ready, ladies? This is fabric. <laughs> Look at this. Oh, my gosh. I need to make it bigger for you. Sorry. This is just far too cool. I love Look at that fabric. It's beautiful. Wow. <laughs> it's lovely. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it is gorgeous. And sometimes prints like that can look too much when they're on, but oh my gosh, you look gorgeous. <laughs> <laughs> it's too cute. So that is oh. my go-to dress for anything where I have to dress up. I'm like, I'm wearing the bird dress. I'm amazed it still fits me. <laughs> me forever as far as I'm concerned um but it's a 1940s pattern which you can't really see the details as well um on the blog as you can in real life but it's got like the shoulder shoulder yokes and the soft gathers and then like it's got gathers that come under the bust and gathers that come out of this it's just so beautiful it's such a beautiful beautiful design um, yeah that's a bit better yeah it's and the button that you use, mm -hmm. yeah, just gorgeous. I really love yeah. that dress. That's probably my all-time favorite thing I've ever made. Miss um, <laughs> so Faye says she loves the, the backdrop. <laughs> oh, I miss, that's my old house. Oh, that was uh, the shed. <laughs> I didn't even see the backdrop. All I see, <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm in love with that print. And the, the outfit, the gathering, the oh. <laughs> I can see why it's one of your favorites. I was just going to say, I can see why she likes it. Um, yes, I see that Faye has a question. We're almost at the time where we will take questions. I'm wondering if anyone else had any questions and you're watching live on Crowdcast, please feel free to put them down below. We would love to see that. And if you'd like to come on camera and ask Lauren a question, we would really love that. Yes. <laughs> 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 So if you will, just let me know and we'll have you come in. That would be great. So, <laughs> um, Carol would like to see the prom dress. The prom dress. I tried looking up just with the word prom and I couldn't find it. Uh, Butterick 6019, I think, is the <laughs> I think that's a pattern number. Wow. <laughs> Butterick 6019. Okay. Oh, wow, you're like the... the fabric number with I know really <laughs> don't ask me about mine because you won't get the same answer <laughs> well, I don't know oh my goodness uh, well oh, oh you got it I found it Yay. oh yeah I, was I can tell just by looking at it I'm like yeah that that's that so works. I did actually wear this to prom oh that is too cute wow. Thank you. oh my wow. oh that is beautiful Gorgeous dress and a gorgeous young lady. Yeah, that, that is. You know, I'm not that much younger. What what so fabric? <laughs> what fabric is that? <laughs> we got it. Oh, Lauren, we got it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we got it. <laughs> yeah. What did you? I'm oh, sorry. What what fabric is it in? You said. It's a silk fail, which is uh, mm -hmm. similar to Dupioni silk. Yeah. Wow. A little bit stiffer. So I'm not wearing a petticoat under that dress. I just put horsehair trim around the bottom and then it, it stands out on its own. Oh, that is too cute. What inspired you to make that particular dress for the prom? Well, I wanted an excuse to make a fancy dress because you never have excuse to wear fancy dresses. <laughs> so, um, and I should say, I, I went to prom because my best friend's a high school teacher. So I went with her. It wasn't, okay. I don't have like a 18 year old boyfriend or anything. <laughs> but, 
I had always been interested in that particular dress. Um, it's a pattern by Gertie, and I thought that would, wow. like, if I ever get married, I would love a red version of that. That's that, would be, that would be the dress that I would get married in. And, wow. I mean, perpetually single over here, probably not ever going to get married, but I'm going to go to the dress. I actually tried to get red silk to make it, but I ordered it during prom season, and they were sold out. Wow. So, black. Because I thought that would be a nice, classy color, but the the pattern has a lot of um, it has a lot of structure built into it, and there's a lot of like fine finishing. Mm -hmm. So it was a it was a fun, really complicated, long term project to work on, as opposed to just something you make in a couple of days. Which I don't get to do enough of that because my lifestyle is just so casual. I don't even live in a climate where I necessarily need like a heavy winter coat. Uh -huh. So I don't do a lot of projects like that. <laughs> Yeah. Wow. It's beautiful. It's gorgeous on you. That Thank gorgeous you. body. Yes. <laughs> yes. You look fabulous. <laughs> wow. Well, thank you, Carol, for asking us to show that prom dress because it was gorgeous. It truly is gorgeous. Now, looking at all these pretty things that you have, okay, tell us the deep down dirty. What is it that <laughs> you made that you absolutely hated? Well, hmm. like recently or ever? Anytime. Huh. I know I had a post about one. Oh, you did? <laughs> fail, 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 fail. That's okay. The Amy Butler bag that I made. I need to go out okay. and read that one because <laughs> I can I only. Post for that, and people still commented on that. They're like, I'm crying because this is so funny. <laughs> uh, it's just awful. Everything about it chose like the worst fabric ever. And then I did a terrible job of sewing it and it just looks like shit. It's awful. <laughs> <laughs> I have to go out and read that one. There it is. Oh, okay. <laughs> just so bad. It doesn't look that bad. And you posted it. So you're great. You posted your fails as well as all your beautiful pieces. <laughs> I, I'm going to go read that after we're done. That's too funny. You have to <laughs> <laughs> Carol, said, Carol said, what color is that? Is it, yeah, um, it's actually a really beautiful teal. You just can't tell. Oh, okay. Okay. It was a terrible fabric choice. Oh my goodness. That was oh. my favorite picture. <laughs> it doesn't even stand up straight. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, that's too funny. I'm sorry. We don't mean to laugh. <laughs> I know. That's why I put it up. <laughs> it's fabulous. Absolutely fabulous. Yes, it is. Now, do you have any um, aspect of sewing that you find most challenging for you? Um, and this is going to sound like a, a big cop out, but it's sometimes I have to, it's hard to make myself slow down. Like, I, I think I caught up in the finished piece that I don't think to enjoy the process that leads oh. to. Mm -hmm. So I'll get stressed and, you know, I want to finish it, want to finish it, want to finish it and then start getting stressed and then have to take a step back and be like, no, I do this because it's fine. Yeah, mm -hmm. that because technique wise, like nothing really bothers me. I've <laughs> been I anything can be ripped out with a seam ripper if you ruin it, like it sucks, but nobody dies. I would hope yeah. not. So I, I don't really live in fear of making mistakes. Again, that's the sewing teacher in me talking. <laughs> it's it's a it's a learning opportunity. Yeah. Um, but I do sometimes catch myself, frequently catch myself, like not enjoying it and just trying to finish it when like, I feel like the way I feel about making clothes versus buying clothes is the same way I feel about riding a bicycle versus driving a car. If I'm in a hurry, I'll take my car. Mm -hmm. yeah, I'm not going to take my bike if I'm in a rush. Like the bike is there for the, for the journey, not the, not to get to the destination. And so I feel the same way about making them versus buying them when it comes to clothes. Right. You go over to H and M if you want, if you are in a hurry. I yeah. remember I read that. It's that. <laughs> less fast fashion. That's I do it because I like making it. So yep. yeah, that probably wasn't the answer you wanted. That was <laughs> no, 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 no. It was perfect because, you know, sometimes I, I I'm guilty of that myself and you miss everything. By doing that, just trying to get to the finish, and a lot of times you make mistakes by doing yeah. it that way. So, and then no, you I, make mistakes. I agree. I, I agree. made a dress once um, that had a. It's a. 
and it had a ponte skirt and a silk top and then it had an invisible zipper that zipped all the way down the back it's the uh it was the lolita patterns dress oh <laughs> yeah. uh, so i messed up something with the zipper where it connected from the silk to the ponte uh -huh. It was an invisible zipper. I had to go out of my way to buy this zipper. I didn't live near a fabric store and I was on a deadline to finish the dress because I think it was for a mood post. And I got frustrated that I messed up the zipper. So I just slashed into it with a seam ripper and like literally cut the teeth off the zipper tape instead of oh. taking it out of the dress. Oh my gosh. And when yeah, she just, that, which is it? Um, oh, sorry. I was going to, I'm trying to find the dress. Um, is it a kind of a plaid on top of black? Yep. Yeah, it's like plaid and navy. What did you do? I'm left. Oh, so fortunately, where I cut, where I sliced it was where it connected to the ponte skirt. So uh -huh. I closed it and I just had to like really weasel it on my body. Like Ooh. so that everywhere from the boobs down is ponte knit. And then from the top up it buttons. So I could like barely squeeze it on. Oh, that's gorgeous. I love that. I love that dress. Oh, that's, that's beautiful. Great pattern. Yeah. I love so every time I try to rip out a zipper and I get mad, I stop and I think, hey, remember what happened with that dress, Lauren? Yeah. <laughs> I love I would have been crying to this day. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> you can't get mad at yourself either. It's like what, what's what's yeah. that gonna accomplish? Exactly. Exactly. I think that's probably part of what's kept you blogging for so long too um yeah you do hear so many people saying oh, i used to have a blog and i don't anymore but if, if you can't keep that sense of fun in it yeah you probably will lose interest and i guess yeah thinking about like you don't like cutting out little underwear so you find a way around it mm -hmm. um when things happen you you have methods and things to do to make sure that they don't bring you down and that uh, that keeps you blogging into the future which leads into my next question um I mean, already you super successful blogger, uh, design and so lovely, lovely clothing. And it seems like it's brought you better sewing skills, closer to the sewing community, uh, your mood sewing network blogger, you've traveled because of um, your, your blog. What do you see in the future? Like, do you have any plans or you're just kind of one of those, I'm on this roller coaster, let's go, you know, like, you know, are you throwing caution to the wind or do you have definite plans for the future? Um, the only thing that I've been thinking about for the future is now that I say this out loud, it means I have to do it. I want to get, <laughs> oh, no. I think you want to be what? really fun. Like I missed that channel. Oh, oh. Yeah. I would watch that. Yeah. yeah me I too. Me I, too. Um, I, I could use more Lauren. <laughs> <laughs> like, I think that, um, I think that's where a lot of stuff is headed now is it's either the micro platform of Instagram, which yeah. I like Instagram, but I have a lot to say, you know, like <laughs> yeah. I put it on yeah. an Instagram post. It's, yeah. it's, I have lots to say and I have strong opinions. Um, but I think video would be really fun. And so right now I'm kind of trying to figure out a camera setup for that. Um, I got a, I got a GoPro cause I thought I could just put it on my head and be like, Rant. But <laughs> I don't know if it's quite the right angle, still figuring things out. But I'd like to start even just by doing like short tutorial videos. Because um, I think a lot of people learn better from a video versus yeah. a photo. I'm, I'm not like that. I prefer photos. I think videos move too fast. But it would be like really great to have both options for people. So if you can't do the photos and you can do the video. And I just think video would be fun. I clearly like talking, so I'd be perfect for it. <laughs> <laughs> the seamstresses of YouTube have a Facebook group that you might want to look into. They're yeah. very lovely, super supportive, and um, yeah, they're just great. They have lots of tips and stuff as well. So yeah. um, yeah. YouTube, huh? yeah. Yes, I've found some amazing people to watch as well as um, just, yeah, watch the videos. It, it's lovely, but you don't have to. It's just thinking uh, things I'd like to know when I started YouTube. Myra and I talk about it all the time because Myra is um, putting up her first video on YouTube yeah. just this week. So, um, and it's fabulous. That's exciting. So yeah. <laughs> so yeah, we talk about strategies and things I learned by doing it the wrong way. <laughs> <laughs> yes, thank you so much. I appreciate that. And I did post it very nervously. I pushed that publish button last night. So <laughs> we'll see how it goes. 
So Lauren, you'll have to let us know uh, when your first video is up, and we'll tell everyone on the show and the community news at the end. Yes. Because um, yeah, I I honestly can't wait. I love that you have such a clear, strong voice, Me too. and um, I think everyone would love to see it as well. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Well, we do have a couple questions yeah. from our audience. Um, uh, well, both from the fabulously wonderful Faye <laughs> of uh, Faye Sewing Adventures. Her first question is. You mentioned that you are self-employed. What is your business? Um, I do not have a business. I work for other women. I um, work part-time as a, I work at Craft South part-time, which is the craft store. Mm -hmm. And I handle all of the stuff related to our classes. So we offer classes in our shop. So I schedule them, uh, handle sign-ups, hire new teachers, advertise them, get the samples in, all that stuff. That's that's one part-time job. My other part-time job sounds really glamorous. It's not. I'm a personal <laughs> assistant, and my boss is not a celebrity, which is always the second question. <laughs> She's not a celebrity. She sells, like, fitness products. She actually lives in Rhode Island now, so I work remotely for her, which means I work from home a few days a week. And I've been working for her for about three years. She's an amazing woman. Um, it's funny that the two – People I work for women entrepreneurs. Um, I haven't worked for a man since I quit working in corporate. Basically, I've only worked for women since then. Um, and then I also do a bit of teaching, like independently outside of Craft South. So that's like me going up to teach pants at Workroom Social or traveling around to teach classes or like any income that comes through like my blog. That would be like my, I guess that would be my business, but it's not really. Yeah, that's yeah, a good thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it makes um, a lot of my write-offs really fun. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Definitely. And that was Faith's first question. Mm -hmm. um, her next one is, I've been reading Lady Bird for some, quite some time and I've always wondered why the two L's? <laughs> Everybody asks that. It will have a fun answer. I'm yeah. really sorry in advance, but I'll tell you behind <laughs> it. It's, it's stupid. Um, when I turned 18, everybody kept sending me credit card offers in the mail. And I started getting spam phone calls and stuff. And they would always spell my name wrong or pronounce it wrong. And I'm like, how the hell do you get Lauren wrong? Like, Lauren is <laughs> it's not even spelled uncommonly. It's, it's literally my first two names were two of the top ten names of the year I was born. Like, it is an incredibly common name. <laughs> so I thought it would be really funny because I was 18. I was like, I'm going to change the spelling of my name and I'm going to put two L's in front of it. And then I'll have a reason for them to get mad when they spell it wrong and be like, yeah. you know, I'm going to like really ruin someone's day. So I never actually did <laughs> that, just spoiler alert. Um, but about a year or two later, when I started sewing more, um, I decided to have a little clothing line and to basically to be able to sew and have enough money to keep buying fabric. It was like this circle of life. So I had this little clothing line and we didn't know what to call it. Um, I have this bird tattoo on my arm and every guy that I've ever dated has called me lady bird. Cause they've, they've all thought they thought of that name. So, <laughs> whatever guy was dating at the time was like, well, you should call your clothing line lady bird, like your tattoo. And I was like, okay, well, two L's on it. Like, like, because I was still spelling, I was spelling my name with two L's. So we put the two L's on it. That was the name of the clothing line. When I started the blog, I was still running the clothing line. And um, it was the clothing line's blog for like the first two posts. And then after that, I people knew what it was and I couldn't change it. That's a really bad story. But you <laughs> I don't know. I think it suits. You know, like um, all the clothing that you see on your blog, uh, a lot of people would say, I'd love to wear that. It's great. But it does have that certain something, the unknown, yeah. you know, that might not need to be there, but it's fabulous there. So I think I would not change it. If someone asked you to no. even, you know, it's perfect the way it is. Just like Just yourself, like you. this is yeah. fabulous. <laughs> fabulous, fabulous. Yeah. Well, that was the end of our questions. Thank you, Faye. Again, one of our favorite favorite. Viewers, yes. our VIP yes. is fabulous. <laughs> yes, she is. 
Do you have any more questions, Myra? Because we're getting to the end of the show. Yeah, no, I don't. I uh, well, we have. Let's see, do we have? Myra, oh, did you forget? <gasps> Darn, she caught me. <laughs> every time, every show, I always say I'm gonna get this in, so it's not gonna catch me. Doggone it, she caught me on this one. Shoot. Okay. Printed or PDF? <laughs> oh, me? Printed or PDF? So, usually printed, but I found a place that will print PDF patterns for $2, and it is $2 a sheet, and it is half a mile from my house. Wait, so, wait, wait. Yes, now. Dollars a sheet. Get out. Oh, holy sheet. That's awesome. <laughs> oh, my I word. Printed, but I can get, you know, a pattern printed for like four bucks now. Oh my gosh. Well, I'm team PDF and I'm shocked because I, I just taped all of mine. I told everybody I was okay with that. So everyone was talking about what you just said. Well, take it to a coffee shop. You know, it's really, it's only roughly about $8 or so. So Maria carried her little self out there to the copy shop <laughs> and went in and started plugging the stuff in the machine, put my little USB in there and printed it out. And it said something about $5.99. I said, okay, that's cool. Cause you know, I thought it was gonna be $8. Printed that thing out and the total came up to over 20 something dollars. And I had paid 14 for the pattern. So you yeah. add that together. I was sick. I said, never again, <laughs> never uh, again. Yeah, see, you can't go, so like Kinko's, FedEx Kinko's, um, Staples, any of those big major copy shops, they charge like 10 bucks a sheet. Yeah. Don't go to those. What you need to find <laughs> is you need to find um, a, a large scale plotter. So like an architect mm -hmm. or a CCAD or oh. even like an architect school. So the place that I go to is called CCAD Reprographics. And I found out about it from an architect who came in the craft store. She said something about being an architect and I said, stop. <laughs> stop. <laughs> she told me it's $2.18 a page. I know they ship. Oh, nice. So you could do them in Nashville, but I'm sure that you've got something local to you too. I think even yeah. like the college near my old apartment had access to like a large scale printer. Yeah. So you just kind of have to call around and yeah. like, mm. find Thanks. an architect to get buddy buddy with, but do not yeah. lose your money. Yeah, <laughs> not that. yeah, I, I, that that was terrible. So yeah, I'll thank you for the tip. I'll be looking around for that. <laughs> wow. So do we have any other questions from our audience for Miss Lauren tonight? If not, we're not going to hold her up for too long because we know we are really blessed to have her here and we hope to get her back again sometime. So we don't want to take too much of her time. Dawn, what about you? Uh, yeah, I don't have any other questions. Just a couple quick, quick, quick announcements. Okay. Um, next week, uh, Bianca from Thanks I Made Them is coming on the show. And the week after, Jossie from Pink Chocolate Break. Um, Yes, and we have some, I can't say yet, because we haven't booked dates, some other yeah. pretty fabulous people. I mean, like, I got excited when Lauren said she was coming on the show. I did, too. What? Same thing. I'm sorry. I was going to say, same thing. Coming up, there's more exciting people. So we're really looking forward to it. We're feeling very blessed right now that uh, so many people are coming on the show. Um, the only other thing is, please, 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 we need your help. Yes. yes. You yes. we need your help. Um, we have this event that we have going on. It is, as you know, the So You Think You Can Sew event. Um, if you guys could share out any information on this, we're looking for talented sewists who are not shy um, and are willing to come on the show and have a little bit of a sewing challenge with us. There will be prizes. It will be, although it's slightly competitive uh, in the nature of it, but it is mostly for fun. Um, if you've seen Myra's audition video, hilarious <laughs> it will it will definitely um be a blast so if you guys could let everyone yeah. know because we're definitely looking for people to come on the show um as long as they let us know before the end of august yeah. and um we would love it if they could do a quick facebook live they could contact us and we'll uh discuss it with them we'll even help them um just so that we could play their little audition on here yeah. it can be as simple as my name is uh, lauren <laughs> I'm a 
fabulous sewer. I am entirely uh, my own person, and you should choose me because you need me. You know what I mean? <laughs> or yeah. because I'm talented. Look at some of the things I made. Two minutes yes. max. If, yeah. If you have any questions at all, um, just uh, go to our That Sewing Lab Facebook page. We would love, love, love to hear from you. Absolutely. Um, but I think the only thing in kind of community news, don't forget that there's so much talent is doing. Uh, the group is doing another challenge. Home decor. Home decor, yes. So check that out if you have the time as well, because the stuff that comes out of those challenges are amazing. So yeah. I can't wait to see what comes out this one. And yeah, that's it for kind of community news. If you have any community news that you'd like to add, like when Lauren puts her first video up, we're hoping she'll tell us yes. or we'll find out right away so we can share it. Um, yes, please, please let us know. Just like I said, go to the Facebook group, drop us a message. We'd love to share any sewing news that's out there. And last but not least, thank you, Lauren. Yes. Thank you for coming on. Yes, applause, applause, applause. <laughs> well, thank you so much for asking me. I had a lot of fun and I've been reading everybody's little things in the thing. So thank you. <laughs> I'm so flat right now. Yeah. <laughs> you were awesome, just like we knew you would be. So thank you. And until if everybody's done, then until next time, thank you all again for joining us at that sewing lab. We hope to see you all again next Tuesday at 7.30 p.m. Have a great night, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Thanks, Lauren. Thank you.